Hey there YouTube world, Matt Schwartz the Welding Geek and on this part of the helmet build I'm going to be doing the dome and the back section. So if you want to see this part of the video, stay tuned. It's time to make a dome use my dome top template here this will make half of my dome I'm just gonna trace them out here with my pen I'm also gonna mark the top and the back with a dot on the top and two dots in the back just so I can track which part of the dome it is as I start to planish and fabricate this dome now that I have my pieces traced out and marked top and bottom I'm gonna get them blanked out there on the shear and then also cut them out on the bandsaw here. It is now annealing time. I'm going to use an oxyacetylene torch here the acetylene is set to about 5 pounds and on the oxygen it's set to about 25 pounds um, and this is just a cutting torch setup. Um, what you do is use the acetylene without oxygen um, to coat the metal in soot and this soot burns off at the temperature aluminum anneals. Um, so, as you can see here, I've got soot all over the aluminum. Now I'll go back and turn the torch on and add oxygen to it so you get the little feathered flames. Now when you're doing this, especially with the cutting torch, you don't want to kick the oxygen handle because then the temperature just shoots up and you're going to burn a hole in it. You're just using the regular flame of the cutting torch and you can see how the soot is burning away. And this is going to make the aluminum a lot easier to work with. It softens it up. Now after you get done doing this, you want to take it over to a water source and quench it immediately. And this will make it even softer. So the next step here now is I've got a sand bag. This is a leather bag filled with sand. And I've got plastic mallets. And what I'm going to do here is start beating the tar <laughs> out, of my, out of my piece of metal. I'm also going to use the stretcher here. You can see how it pulls the metal apart. And the shrinker pulls the metal together on the edges to start forming my dome, getting the metal to form in the direction that I want to go. So I'm going to start shrinking here on the edges. You can see how it's gathering all the material up. And then you'll see here in a minute, I'll use the plastic mallet to beat a strip directly in the center of the aluminum. And you can see how it started to pull the dome in the shape that I want it to go. Next up, I'm going to start beating the tar out of it with my hammer. And you do want to start in the direct center of it, like so. You can see how it starts to form it into the sandbag, flatten it out. And then I'm going to go around the center just working my way to the outside trying to force the center of this thing out and now this is going to get the big moves done and then I will take it over to the planishing hammer to smooth out all the bumps and ridges and as I'm hammering this I'm going back and forth between um, the plastic mallet and the sandbag and my shrinker and I'm just pulling this thing into a dome shape this is half of a dome um, but I'm going to do that over and over and get both sides reasonably similar. So this is our planishing hammer. And what it does is it basically, ham it's a hammer and dolly that moves us super fast. Um, we've got a bunch of different dies on the bottom and, and some for the top. More so on the bottom. You can see how they go from a really tight radius to a really flat. Got some squares and some other shapes. Um, I usually start with a number two, depending on what I'm doing. But I start with the two here, and then I'll work up to a three, to a five, to a six, just depending on what size radius you want. 
and you're just working around uh, smoothing out the hammer strokes of the plastic mallet you can see the difference here how it smoothed all that stuff out and so basically I'm gonna go back and forth here in between the sandbag and the planishing hammer until I achieve the desired effect that I'm looking for um, and just working back and forth until it's smooth and in the right shape. All right, and I think I'm getting pretty close to the desired shape that I want. I've got the other side mirrored to it pretty close. The next step in the process is I'm gonna take it to my workbench and square up the edges so I can get the domes, the two halves, tacked together. And how I square up the edges is I'll use a pair of tin snips, and then I'll also use the center punch tools. Now these are made to, if you have a hole in a piece of material and you're trying to transfer it over to another panel or to a tube or something, you use these. They're all, they go from a sixteenth all the way up to half inch. But I like to use them flat on the table here to scribe basic, basically like an eighth inch line. You can see it here. It's a little more, about three sixteenths inch line. And this is going to square my edges up so I can tack my two halves together. So I do this a couple times until I get the desired effect on um, both sides and then I'll be able to tack the two together. Now you can see here these are getting really close to fitting together. It's just not quite perfect yet though. So what I'm gonna do is take my DA sander, dual action sander, I put it on the setting where it just spins in the one direction, not both directions, and I'm just gonna square these edges up a little straighter. And this should get it to where I should be able to fuse tack them together with my TIG welder. This is my deep burring tool. You've probably seen me use it a million times if you're a subscriber. And this just takes the burr off the edge of the aluminum. Um, and it'll make it easier for me to tack together instead of trying to burn to that, that burr. You may ask, what's a burr? A burr is like material left over after sanding. It's a very sharp, fine edge after you use a bandsaw, after you use sanding. Um, there'll always be a fine burr on any material after cutting. And you, you want to get rid of this burr because number one, it can cut you, and number two, it's bad for welding. Next up, it's time to get our halves tacked together. I have a, a body hammer here, and this is actually a knife cutting tool, I believe. But I use it to be able to get inside of my, in, in the crack, and to be able to, um, kind of hard to explain, but get the edges of the material to line up when they're not cooperating. And I'm just using my TIG welder here to fuse tack um, my, my seam here because I'm going to gas weld it. Now many people have asked me why I use a gas weld on um, these seams. It's because it's a more pliable, easier sandable weld. It's just a lot easier to work with when you're doing a dome. Um, it just it sands way easier and I'm going to go back in here and planish this after I get it welded and it's just a more pliable weld. 
you can see how I got this old fuse tack together. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get this thing gas welded together after I get it all dollied and straight. time to weld this thing together. I have my flux here, which is just, it's basically like when you're TIG welding, you use argon as a shielding gas. The flux acts as a shielding from oxygen, keeping the weld from oxidizing immediately when you're welding it. Um, this is my, my gas welding setup. It's actually hydrogen and oxygen. Um, and hydrogen burns a lot cleaner, so you can actually gas weld aluminum that way. With the clean the cleaning cleaner burning hydrogen gas i'm using 1100 rod which is just almost uh, pure aluminum um, and i'm just going to go through stitch this thing together with the gas welding torch This is what the gas welding seam looks like. You can see it's not as much of a weld as a TIG weld is. So I'm going to go ahead and buzz off the, the bulk of the top of the weld here real quick with the DA sander. And then I'm going to take it back over to the planishing hammer and planish my dome to its final shape. Planishing hammer is a tool that needs a lot of practice, just understanding how your metal is going to move. I'm still not the best at this, but I've, I'm becoming more competent as I'm using it. So the more practice, like anything, you get better at it. Um, so I'm really happy with how this dome came out, um, and it, it, it creates a really nice helmet. I'm excited about it. Alright, I got the dome to the desired shape that I'm looking for here. Looks a little weird without the sandblasting, but once you get it sandblasted, everything spoos out. Um, so the next step here is going to, to square up the bottom edge like I did on the center edge. I'm going to do it the exact same way, the transfer punches, and then with my tin snips. Just like with my center cuts, this thing is almost square, but not quite, so I'm going to hit it with my DA sander and get that final nice square edge that I'm looking for. Now that I got my dome taken care of, it's time to attach the back. Um, on this, you can see I've got some center punch marks that I'm going to put on here, and this is just so I can locate the back the center of the back here just to make sure I get my vent on center when I go put my vent into place here. That's what these center punch marks will be used for. All right, now I'm gonna fuse tack with the TIG torch, the back section onto the dome, just clamping it into place and uh, 
fuse tacking it all the way across the back. Alright, just like with the center section or the dome section here, I got my stuff fuse tacked on. This will be a little rinse repeat. I'm going to go ahead and dolly the tacked edge so it's semi straight. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this seam gas welded. Time to dress this weld off and make this whole dome look like one piece of metal. I'm going to start off here with the DA sander with the 120 grit sandpaper. I'm going to dress the weld and also like the dome and other, other spots of this that are high. Just trying to blend out um, a lot of the imperfections in the helmet. Alright, the first step is done, 120 grit sandpaper, next up will be 200 grit sandpaper, going to do the same exact thing. You can see that I've taken the blending out just a little further each time. I'm going to use this drum sander here made by Dynabraid and this is going to smooth out all the sanding marks. This is step number three. Alright, this is what it looks like after the sanding roll. You can see a little smoother, just blending everything out. The next thing I'm going to do is I've actually got a couple pieces of foam glued together with some of the 200 grit sandpaper or 220 grit sandpaper and I'm going to hand blend this all together now. Alright, this is what it looks like after the hand sanding. I've got two more steps coming up here. I'm going to hit it with a, a red scotch bright pad, really, really smooth it out, and then I'll take it to the sand blaster and sand blast it.
right here's the finished product after sandblasting looking nice and smooth you can kind of see here where the weld is slightly this will actually go away after the polishing process um, and then you can also see the little center punch marks that I put in there uh, where the vent will go so and there's the center center weld and all right that was the dome rear section video you can almost see the weld still in there if I get it close enough I think they're yeah right there you can kind of see the haze but can't tell from here and I honestly kind of like it I kind of feel like this is how the Mandalorian's helmet would have been made <laughs> anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video series um, I really had a fun time making this helmet and I'm really happy with the finished product um, if you want to support me um, you can subscribe to my channel. You can like the videos. You can comment. Um, I also have a Patreon page that I'll link in all my videos here um, where you can get the templates to make this helmet if you're brave enough to attempt it in metal. Or you might even be able to use the templates for cincture or something like that. I haven't tried it, but um, it might work. Uh, so, yeah. I um, hope you guys are enjoying the series. My name is Matt Schwartz, and I'm the Welding Geek. Thank you.